California created 465,700 jobs in the past 12 months. Texas During only- COVID? Yes. Yes. <coughs> I'll come to what's fishy about this here in a moment because my bullshit leader went off. But versus Texas only created 286,400 new jobs. So California is kicking Texas's ass. Hello? The Brittany Richardson Experience. Like, I don't know if you've been following what's been happening in California, but the first report I saw was over two dozen companies, uh, corporations vowed to leave California. Well, they went to Texas. They went to Texas, yes, which is Wyoming, hilarious. Texas, and Montana. Those are the three places that are going right now. Or no, what's sorry, interesting, Nevada. Well, well, yeah. The only thing I was going to say was like, What's interesting about Texas to me is that they're like polar opposite in their tax policy is California. Like California is all regulations. Texas yeah. is very lax. So you have, if you really wanted a model to see how things function in less government, less tax, less regulation versus more government, more tax, more regulation, <coughs> there's the perfect model for you right there. Texas versus California. And the Hoover Institution said in 2018, 2019, 765 commercial facilities left California, said 13,000 estimated businesses have left between 2009 and 2016. That's not even counting during COVID this year. There is a letter that somebody wrote quoted in this article by Erica Douglas, a young entrepreneur. It says she moved her company whoosh traffic from San Diego to Austin, Texas, which seems to be the go-to city. Yeah, now. Austin's like the new Hollywood. <laughs> it really is. I yeah. think it will be. A few years ago, here's what she had to say. Dear California, she says, I'm leaving you. I've struggled with a government that is notoriously business unfriendly with everything from high taxes on earning to budgeteering businesses to work more to comply with bureaucracy. I paid enough in California income tax in one year alone to hire another worker for my business. And you charge me $800 annually as a corporation fee when most states only charge a few dollars. She said goodbye to California. I know Charles Schwab has vowed to leave in 2021. Mm -hmm. There's another company, big one that vowed to leave, but a whole bunch of people are leaving for taxes. Yeah. It's insane. But there's well, it's a really good place to it. do business. It's a really good place to do business there because they don't have all the red tape. You don't have to jump through all the hoops. Um, mm. It's real easy. You just pretty much do your business there and don't have to, there's not much to it. Like I, I incorporated in Oklahoma a few times and then I, you know, compared to Oregon, it's uh, in Oregon is a little bit like California. They're just a couple of pegs down from their regulations but they're pretty close mm-hmm. regulatory wise. Um, but yeah, Texas and Oklahoma, you pretty much just get your business entity. Say, go to the secretary of state website, um, do an entity name search. If it's clear, then you just pay the $50 and you got yourself an S corporation or a C corporation. They mail you the stuff in the mail. And then you just, you know, like if your business that you do has to have a license like esthetician or beauty or something, and that's different. You don't even need, that's all you need is the license to do business for that. You don't have to get a separate corporation or anything. Um, so a while back, I looked into painting, like to do like house painting or something. <clears throat> when I looked into it, like in Oklahoma, all you have to do is go do your business name, um, incorporate it, whatever. And then you just learn how to paint and you're a painter. So I looked into it in Oregon and here's what you have to do in Oregon. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, if this has changed now, but this is a really good example Um, you have to be an apprentice for like two or three years under a painter that has the license to paint. Um, Then the painter can only have like two or three apprentices at a time. And then you have to, before you get your license, you have to have a bond for $500,000 or something ridiculous like that just to get the license. And then the license is incredibly high. Then you have to do your, um, business filing it's like a you get that um contractor number or something that you have a license number that has to be visible on every piece of signage that you have Uh, it's it's just i can't remember there's like four big giant things you have to do but then they make it really hard because like the whole apprenticeship thing is prohibitive 
that's probably why like around here there's like father and son painters you know that's it it's almost but anyway I was just using that for an example because like how the heck I don't know like and you think about California but Texas and Oklahoma no you just go hang up your shingle and start painting you know get your whatever that's it that's why they're moving here red tape like it drives me crazy I don't understand why things can't be simplified because every good entrepreneur understands how to streamline something and simplify something. And mm-hmm. th- th- you don't need all of this crap. Like I understand basic regulations I mean, don't do illegal shit. Don't do anything shady. You know, it's like, yeah. but th- it can be so much simpler than this. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I just, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Everything just sucks right now, but I wish people, I wish more people knew that we have more power than, than they think that we do. I don't think people know what to do though. I think that yeah. I've noticed that because a lot of people are pissed off, but it's like, they have the, they immediately say, what am I going to do? Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm over here in this small town. I don't have a following. What am I going to do? What actions do we do? I think if somebody stood up as a true leader mm-hmm. to really organize, I think that a lot of people would join in. But I, I think people just don't know what to do. And things are so politicized that as soon as they jump on the bandwagon for something, then all of a sudden they find out, oh, it's right leaning or left leaning or this or that. And they jump off. Yeah. I know. It's. I wish it wasn't so polarized. I, um, everything just should be simpler than that. I know it starts at like a state and local level mm-hmm. on who we vote in. I was interested in this whole Texas versus California thing because they're so polar opposite. So I'm wondering which state's actually doing better, which models better economically, California or Texas. So I looked up California's economy is 2.6 trillion, Texas 1.6 trillion. Okay, so I saw this article. Here's where I was going with this. Was this article said that California is doing much better than Texas and they're sticking it to Texas because... California created 465,700 jobs in the past 12 months. Texas During COVID? Did. Yes. Yes. <coughs> now, I'll come to what's fishy about this here in a moment because my bullshit <laughs> major went off. Yeah. And they said versus Texas only created 286,400 new jobs. So California is kicking Texas's ass. Hello. Yeah. So I'm like, wait a second. California has a $2.6 trillion economy, Texas only $1.6 trillion. So yeah. I'm like, wait a second, that is not fair to just calculate the total jobs created. You have to break it down per capita to make this a fair fight to see who's actually more productive. Texas is actually doing much better per capita than California is. And they've yeah. got an economy that's much smaller. They're only 61% of what California is, but yet they're creating more jobs per capita than California is. But yeah, what pissed me off on that article was it was, it painted this picture and I should have known this right off the bat because you read these articles and when the first sentence of the article is, oh, that corrupt so-and-so out of Texas came out here trying to get, you know, I'm like, okay, already this thing has a bad spin. I don't remember the Texas name of the Texas governor that was quoted in that. But I'm like, already you can tell this is a smear article. And it was just blasting Texas saying that their model did not work at all. And here's the thing with Texas. A lot of people (coughs) may not know too. Texas doesn't have a state income tax. They tax you only on sales tax when you Mm -hmm. purchase something. So that puts the control back in your hands so that if you don't spend money you're not going to get taxed yeah so you have the option to cut back conserve and save money for when you're that's probably why they all went there 